up next, we got to talk about Crew 7, which just launched on August 26th. 3.27 a.m. It took off Eastern Daylight Time. And it was a beautiful launch, obviously dark, but clear nonetheless. And the Crew 7 astronauts all docked today as we're recording this, August 27th, and they're with their crew on the ISS. So what is Crew 7 and, and like what is this? So this is the continuation of making sure that there's crew available for the International Space Station. Now, the commercial crew program was NASA's way of having the private industry help us build a human-rated spacecraft that would allow the U.S. to launch our own astronauts and others from American soil with American rockets and spacecraft, and that happens to be for Crew 7, the Falcon 9 from SpaceX and the Crew Dragon spacecraft. So... The commercial crew program is what reignited America's ability to launch our own astronauts into space, and it couldn't have come at a better time as the global conflict with Russia and Ukraine, Russia has taken the Soyuz, in some cases, off the map. And it makes you wonder what would have happened if America didn't have its ability back in this timeline. But luckily, we're in the timeline where America is thriving in space. And Crew 7 is no difference, and... What's great about the space station in a time where war is around the corner and things are very, very chaotic, the space station and the international partnership that still exists from partnership that was built decades ago, the space station is our beacon of hope. And it places an example of human beings, regardless of their country's backgrounds. On the International Space Station, you are all working together to survive. There are no borders up there. It is, you're all on the same spacecraft. And when it's small enough and contained enough and making yourself survive up there is a team effort, a lot of those things fall to the wayside and we find a way to work together. That's the beauty of the ISS and Crew 7 and these astronauts that are going up there. And every astronaut, every person on this is from a different space agency. So I believe it's one of the first, but a great example nonetheless of what we can do to show the world um, that we can all still work together in space, this Crew 7 is what we're talking about here. So the four astronauts on board, Jasmine Mogbelli, it's her first trip into space after being selected as a NASA astronaut in 2017. The New York native earned a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering with information technology at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts. MIT and a Master's of Science in Aerospace Engineering from the post Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California. Mogbelli is a helicopter and Marine Corps test pilot, badass, has more than 150 combat missions and 2,000 hours of flight time in over 25 different aircraft. She's also a graduate of the U.S. Navy Test Pilot School in Patuxent River, Maryland, a mission commander, she will be responsible for all phases of flight from launch to re-entry, and she will serve as an Expedition 69 and 70 flight engineer aboard the station. You can follow Astro Jasmine on at Astro Jaws on X slash Twitter. Andreas Mogensen was selected to as an ESA, European Space Agency, astronaut in 2009 and became the first Danish citizen in space after launching aboard a Soyuz for a 10-day mission to the space station in 2015. As the pilot of Crew 7, he will be responsible for spacecraft systems and performance. Aboard the station, he will serve as Expedition 6970 flight engineer. Mogensen is from Copenhagen, Denmark. He completed undergraduate studies and received a master's degree in aeronautical engineering from Imperial College London in England before gaining his doctorate in aerospace engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. Mogensen has since served as a crew member for NEMO, NASA's Extreme Environment Missions Operation, an underwater simulation mission, Mission 17 and 18, Mogensen was the European astronaut liaison officer to NASA's Johnson Space Center from 2016 to 2022, working as a Capcom for astronauts aboard the station and as ground support for spacewalks, relaying tasks and direction 
from Mission Control to the Spacewalkers. You can follow him at Astro underscore Andreas on X or Twitter. Satoshi Furukawa will be making his second trip to space, having spent 165 days aboard the space station as part of Expeditions 28 and 29 in 2011. Furukawa is from Kanagawa, Japan, and was selected as a JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut in 1999. He's a physician and received his medical degree from the University of Tokyo and later a doctorate in medical science from the same university. Furukawa served as a crew member on the 13th NEMO mission and later was appointed head of JAXA's Space Biomedical Research Group. Aboard the station, he will become a flight engineer for Expedition 69 and 70, and you can follow him at Astro underscore Satoshi on X or Twitter. And finally, Konstantin Borisov will be making his first trip to space and will also serve as mission specialist, working to monitor the spacecraft during the dynamic launch and entry phases of flight. He entered the Roscosmos Cosmonaut Corps as a test cosmonaut candidate in 2018 and will serve as a flight engineer for Expeditions 69 and 70. Now, that's a great example of, again, international partnerships and giving examples of us working together to build a better life and survive, in this case, in the harsh environment of space. Now, the first stage of the Falcon 9 was a brand new Falcon 9, uh, Block 5 B1081.1, and it launched from the famous LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center, and the first stage did a great job of launching and landing after sending the crew into orbit, and then the crew, as they were docking back in, had to go to the Harmony module, so they were actually had to go above the station and dock on the other side. So we got to see some cool views. Um, it was very interesting because it, usually when they're on the dark side of the orbit, you know, sunsets and sunrises every 45 minutes, right? So usually when it's dark, the feed will just cut out because there's really nothing there. But uh, it came back in and it, it almost looked stormy. It was really interesting. Um, it looked like you were docking into some really wild uh, deep sea dock. Uh, it was very interesting to see that kind of dichotomy of the space and the deep sea environment. Um, but it was a cool, unique view that we don't usually get to see. And it's always fascinating to watch spacecraft dock and, and what Crew Dragon does and what these future uh, human-rated spacecraft are going to be able to do automatically. The crew basically gets it to a certain point in orbit, and then the spacecraft does the rest of the docking. And it has hold points where it can, you know, uh, as it's speeding up so that it's the same speed as the space station, then it can make tiny moves to get in and out towards the dock. They use lasers to align everything. It's it's pretty wild, um, but it's always uh, an amazing thing to watch. So Crew 7 is on board right now, and we wish them an amazing time in orbit and a very safe splashdown on the return home. <laughs> 